This show is sponsored to you by MountGox.com and MezzyGrill.com and CarpeVM.com. Hi guys, welcome to the PVAS show. This is PVAS and this is my third episode and today I have the wonderful Camille McDonald from Cycle 2 of America's Next Top Model and now recently from America's Next Top Model Cycle 17. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Thanks for inviting me on the show, yes. I appreciate it. I'm so glad you're here with me, like this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, um, I can't wait for the new season. I've been dying to see it, I saw the first one. And I have like a few questions for you. Are you ready? Yep, you're surprised that I'm on America's Next Top Model All Stars? Are you surprised? You didn't think that I would get invited back? Oh no, of course I'm not <laughs> surprised, but I knew he was going to get back on there. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so why wouldn't you look at you? Oh, you're too kind. You're so beautiful. Um, now, I wanted to ask you though, on Cycle 2, mm -hmm. um, you were rocking the Jamaican flag, and I wanted to know where does that all fall into? Are you from Jamaica? What's going on? My family is from Jamaica, West Indies, and I was born here in New York, so I like to call myself a Jamaican, as the term, you know, they call it, which just means born here, but first generation American. Um, I feel very close to my roots mm -hmm. and my heritage, and every summer as a young child, I used to go back. So I love Jamaica. It's sun and sand and water and amazing food and amazing people. So I represent as much as I can because I believe that's where my strength comes from because they always say you have to know where you're from to know where you're exactly. going. Exactly, exactly. It's like me, I'm from the island as well. I'm mm -hmm. from Puerto Rico, so you know. Puerto Rico. Yeah. Uh, hey. Puerto Rico. <laughs> <laughs> no, the how did you come about getting on America's Next Top Model? Oh, wow. Um, I want to hear this because you know, like that's, yeah, there's a lot of models out there, so I want to know how you got into it. That's an interesting story. As you know, hundreds of thousands of girls <laughs> dream of being on America's Next Top Model. It's of an course. amazing opportunity. Um, as you know, a show produced by supermodel, TV personality, um, Tyra Banks. And she holds auditions in different states or her nice. casting um, directors go out and try to find try to who they think has potential to be the next America's Next Top Model. So reality is that I did not want to be on the show. I was at Howard University studying wow. to become a creative director at an advertising agency and I was involved in fashion at Howard and my friends were like, oh my god, you have to audition for America's Next Top Model. It's the best <laughs> show. And I'm like, okay, I just want to get my degree. You know, I just start working, exactly. buy a house. Like, I was a Miss Jamaica US. I was a Miss Florida teen. Wow. I worked the fashion industry in New York City. College, you know, I want to move on. They're like, no, no, we have to audition. So at that time, I had my own fashion styling company in school. And um, they were like, if you don't audition for America's Next Top Model with us as your friend, we're going to fill your voicemail to capacity and you won't be able to get any of your calls from your clients oh <laughs> until you do it. So at Howard, there's a lot of beautiful girls and we have friends who are photography majors and everyone has a portfolio. Just, exactly. just have a portfolio because you're gonna have to audition for the Howard homecoming fashion show at one point. So we all felt like we were prepared. So they filled my voicemail and I decided to go. Went to the audition in Washington DC. They said they were full, they couldn't see any more girls. But of course my friends were like first in line and unfortunately none of them made it. Okay. So I said, okay guys, I auditioned. They're not <laughs> seeing anyone else. So, you know, stop filling my phone. <laughs> and um, I had went to Miami to give Sean Paul, reggae artist, some clothes. And I heard one of the girls who were in the set of um, a Beyonce video shoot say that they were going to the mall because there was an America's Next Top Model ah. audition. And I was like, wow, you know, this seems like something that's pretty big. I keep hearing this America's Next Top, Top Model, model. <laughs> thing. And I've never been afraid of a challenge, so I decided to go and I said to myself, you know what, they're going to see me today and I'm going to get chosen. Nice. So <laughs> I went and um, once again, the lady who was the gatekeeper said, we're full to capacity. We're not seeing anyone else. I'm sorry. So I thought on my toes and said to her, well, I'm not auditioning. My cousin's upstairs. I've been outside in the car for three and a half hours. It's hot. I just <laughs> want to know how far along she is in the line. And she was so overwhelmed with these 
women who are now on the floor crying and screaming, begging. She's pulling her hair out. <laughs> at the end of the day, she's done. So she's just like, whatever. Like, if you want to go see, go see. Because I wasn't auditioning, remember? Exactly. So I go upstairs and I see like 100 girls sitting down like in a row. The bathroom is like full with women like fighting for mirror space, fixing their hair <laughs> and all this other stuff. I'm like, what is going on here? It's a frenzy. Wow. So I realized that there was a young woman who was sitting in one of the chairs. She was the last person. Her number was like, I don't know. 500 and something, 522. Mm -hmm. So I went to the bathroom and I looked around, it was too crowded. They had like a manila envelope. Oh my so God. I went <laughs> and I found a Burger King or a Mag Burger King bag and I like ripped it open and went into my purse, got a black um, eyeliner and wrote like the next number, 523 or something. Oh and I sat God. down. <laughs> so as they're calling, <laughs> as they're calling the girls like 10 by 10 to go into the room, uh, I guess to have their audition, see the casting directors. The same woman who told me that I could go upstairs because I wasn't auditioning to find my cousin or whoever wow. walks by and I'm like, I'm trying to hide <laughs> myself under some hair or something. And she's just like, what, what, are you, what are you doing, whatever. I'm just like, oh. And I look down the road to see if there's anyone that resembles me. So there's a girl like seven seats away. I was like, she's just right there. So I figured I might as well just wait. You know. <laughs> by that time, she was just like, okay, she was done. She just left. <laughs> So I got to be one of the um, lucky women who got into the room and wowed the judges. And oh, my God. That's how I got on the show. <laughs> so wow. sometimes, you know, you have to be creative and be persistent and exactly. um, never take no for an answer. Exactly. You hear that, ladies? Never take no for an answer. <laughs> and gentlemen, too, actually. Now, what is this signature walk that everyone keeps talking about? Like, <laughs> I mean, I saw it on the show, but, you know. Yeah. My signature walk is just that. It's a walk that I feel is unique to myself, and I pretty much branded it. I owned it and lived up to my, my walk. I mean, something as simple as that, I think it's important that we all have something signature about us. It exactly. might not be your signature, might not be your walk. It might be you know your voice. It might be your personality. It's how you, you know, do whatever someone could be a great writer you know that's their whole signature thing so once again you just have to own that and exactly. um live it breathe it eat it but the whole wow. signature walking <laughs> on americans like tama i felt like it was such like a negative thing like it was taken as negative because tyra like banged her head down on the table was like i can't believe you said your signature walk was going to make you famous <laughs> at a go see and i think it was just read wrong, was misunderstood, because at Howard University, once again, we have something called the Homecoming Fashion Show. And Howard's wow. Homecoming Fashion Show is one of, if not the biggest fashion shows out of all um, colleges. It's almost on the level of a New York Fashion Week show, where you have alumni such as Puffy, such as Debbie Allen, such as David Dinkins come and sit in the audience. Um, even people who haven't gone to Howard, exactly. like Oprah. So students from other schools, like University of Maryland and the surrounding areas, would come to Howard to audition for a college fashion show. Like, wow. that doesn't happen anywhere. Yeah, that just same. shows you the magnitude of the show. That's and yeah, and just because you're a student doesn't mean that you're going to have the opportunity to audition. There's a lot of politics that goes <laughs> along. So you have to, like, work your way up to that. Spring exactly. back arts and homecoming, what have you. So I auditioned. I got an audition spot. And I'm looking around, I'm like, wow, these women here are gorgeous. I mean, any hair color, any eye color, measurements, they're at yeah, Howard yeah. University. <laughs> so I had to say to myself, you know what? I want this part in the fashion show. What is signature about me? And I was like, exactly. it's my walk. And I'm going to give them and serve them my signature walk. And they're going to select me today. So you have to find that space of confidence and every time i step on the runway i say a prayer to myself and i went out there and as soon as i turned that corner and they <laughs> saw the tip of my shoe you know or my nose i was on and i basically did my signature walk nice. and i i booked the show so that's how the the word signature walk came about so it came from a very positive place now how do you feel like what like how do you feel like there's any competition out there for you or do you ever feel like threatened when you're going out, you know, in any fashion show or anywhere that you go? There's definitely competition. The fashion industry is an extremely difficult and grueling 
one. And I always tell people that you have to know the business that you're getting into. We have exactly. to study it. Yeah. And being a woman of color in the fashion industry, it's difficult. The reality is the majority of women that you see on the covers of the magazines or who are booked for the major campaigns and the layouts, even a fashion week, um, 35, 40 girls, you might have one or two black women in the show. And it's disproportionate and it's unfortunate, but things are getting better. It's better now than it's ever been before. And it's hard because you want to make sure that you're booked. You might have friends who are black girls also. Exactly. And you don't want it to seem like, okay, well, we're both going off with the same casting. <laughs> you know, it's just going to be me, not you, or <laughs> vice versa. Yeah, like, there's exactly. room, for, there's room yeah. for everyone. But the reality is, is that you have to put your best foot forward and just pray and hope that you book the job and you, and you book the campaign. So in that sense, you can feel threatened that there isn't room for all of us to have the same campaign, the same rum ratio, when in actuality there is. But that just all depends on the powers that um, that be. But I think now people are definitely seeing our talents, our skills, and our walking, and our beauty, and what we're made up culturally, whether it's your, your cheekbone structure, you know, your eyes, your hair, your skin. So I'm very blessed to have been raised as a model in this generation. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, what, like, what, let, let's just go back a little bit to the signature walk. I know <laughs> that you had, um, you have Signature Walk Inc. That you bought it, you mm -hmm. bought the name, and mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about that. Signature Walk Inc. <laughs> Um, once again, I explained the story about how being signature is very important and exactly. you can say it in the, it's literal and it's figurative sense. So I started a company and it's a global fashion marketing company specializing in the business of beauty and fashion and nice. modeling. And as I'm getting older in this industry, it's important to me to be able to give back and also profit off of what I've learned in the business and share that with others. Um, coming from the background of having a degree from the Fashion Institute of Technology, FIT, in fashion design, and also advertising from um, Howard University, it has now landed, allowed me to expand my wings and help other people who are interested in those fields that I have worked in. Exactly. Yeah. Now, do, do you already, you finished school already? Yes, um, I've graduated, and I'm actually thinking about going back to call it to get my master's nice. um, in business, but it all depends on if time is allowed. But I'm so, my schedule is just crazy. I can say that the best part of- <laughs> I know you're never here. <laughs> I know, I'm never here. The best part of modeling is for me traveling and also with my company having the Signature Walk Inc. mentoring program nice. where I take um, one child every six months, so two, two kids a year, and I help them with their endeavors of being involved in the entertainment industry. So for example, there's a young girl named Renee, like she'll come with me to my red carpet events, she'll come with me to photo shoots. Um, this summer I put her into a camp since I couldn't be with her, I was filming All Star. Aww. And um, coming up this week, she has the finale for the camp where she has a red carpet, she gets a limo, she gets to oh, walk wow. the red carpet, do her interview, the mayor will be there, and a host of other uh, celebrities. So uh -huh. I try to keep them, um, I try to keep them involved in extracurricular activities, exercise, diet is important, having the environment of entertainment to hone in on whatever skills are, whether yeah. it's singing or dancing, acting, and also like the educational part of it. And that's also really community amazing. service. That's really good. So, I mean, you know, you I do gotta, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You always got to give back, you know, because the more you give back, the more you'll receive. Mm -hmm. And I'm a true believer on giving back to everybody. And no matter what, that's what I live by every single day. So you shoot too. <laughs> that's true. Now, who is your favorite um, photographer? <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Um, and your makeup artist and your favorite makeup artist. Wow. Tough question. Mm -hmm. Hope I don't get hung when I leave here. <laughs> but favorite photographer. 
um, was a gentleman um, named Irving Penn, nice. and he passed away um, a few oh. years ago, but he's a world-renowned photographer. You might be familiar with some of his work um, in Vogue, whether it's of a product like food or something of the sort. Um, he was just amazing. Like He just paid such great attention to detail like the artistic aspect of everything also you know in fashion too if you were yeah. shot by Irving like your life and your career was was made like on the top you know yeah. and of course <laughs> Pedro Vasquez is an Aww. amazing photographer and I'm looking forward to our shoot so yes, definitely. you know I'm keeping my fingers crossed I think it's gonna be really amazing because you're extremely talented yourself and you. you know young in the business amongst all these like photographer moguls but um you know <laughs> i know we're gonna make the best of it i'm gonna, I'm I'm gonna, gonna shoot you sure now i before. get the best shot ever like, i, I want to shoot with you now before you know i can't afford you <laughs> <laughs> no i never you know never gonna charge you anything i love you i you got that i have always admired you since like my american next time model Aww. i mean that was like my one number one show and that's where I got all my ideas, you know, and that's why I wanted to start shooting people, you know, like well, models and different artists. Wow. Um, and that's, you know, I, I don't know, America's Next Top Model just gave me a lot of inspiration, and especially seeing you on there and seeing all the other models. And I don't know, it was just amazing. And I just love that show. I'm so glad that you're here with me, um, you know, because it's, you know, it's a privilege. That's good. Now, who's your favorite makeup artist? My favorite makeup artist right now is really a tie between Sam Fine and um, Valente, Ooh. which is also Tyra's makeup artist. I just like, can I tell you, I live for these two men in my life, like beat a face down, like gorgeous out of this world, like contouring, just <laughs> I, I, if they were in a rapper, I would just eat them both Tell them to and blow a big you. bubble <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, i'm fine you know and valente make sure you give me a call because this right here you know i know we could just do wonders with it <laughs> <laughs> what is um like your favorite running campaign or do you have any ads um right now currently because you know they say that in my industry you're only good as the last job that you did i have a cosmetic campaign Ooh. that's out by a company called Nika K. Nika K. And the lipstick that I have on right now is by Nika K. Nice. And I believe it's called uh, Pink Lemonade. Pink Lemonade. And Nika K is one of those cosmetic lines that are really inexpensive. And sometimes you can get great products without having to spend like a ridiculous amount of money. So I encourage everyone to pick up Nika K, like this lip gloss I think is only like $2.99 in comparison to like <laughs> my YSLs or my Chanel's yeah. or something like that. So I'm really happy that Nika K picked me for their campaign because, nice. you know, especially now in this tough economic time, everyone wants to look glamorous, but exactly. you know, people are, on, <laughs> people are definitely on a budget and they have great eyeshadow colors as well. But um, besides Nika K, I also did a job for Lancome and L'Oreal Ooh. this year. Mm -hmm, the one for, um, uh, L'Oreal, I was a stand-in for Beyonce. What? So, That's you know, hot. they get to put the makeup on me and test the lighting and do a little great stuff. That's and good. Beyonce That's comes on stage and she does her thing. And um, Lancome, it was for their new eyeshadow. So if you go onto their website, you can see me doing the tutorial on how to put on the, the eyeshadows. You can get like five different looks from like these five colors. So, nice. I mean, beauty... I'm very blessed to have been chosen for beauty campaigns and ads, and that makes me feel really good. Well, I mean, you're a beautiful woman. <laughs> I mean, I, oh, thank you're you. You're so beautiful. Like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, we're going to be right back, and we're going to answer some fan questions. And All right. Bring yeah, them on. Let's do it. All right, we are back, guys. Omar? This show is sponsored to you by MountGox.com. The largest online exchange service for Bitcoin. They now take euros, British N, AUD, and Canadian dollars. It's coming any day now. Euro coming with Bitomat acquisition. Melgox mobile application of Android market allows you to use Bitcoins on the go. UV key, USB security device protects your account even on compromised computers. And mezzygrill.com, where authentic 
Mediterranean food meets modern flavor. Now serving breakfast at 8th Avenue at 55th Street in yeah. NYC. Just a couple blocks south of Columbus Circle. First brick and mortar to accept and sell bitcoins at NYC. And carpaybm.com. Seize your markets, say it with video. Charlie works closely with you from beginning to end to ensure that your video makes an impact. Video on the web is ideal to engage your viewers. And we're back, guys. Um, are they providing food? <laughs> is the sponsor providing food? <laughs> and um, is Osam's um, sponsoring today, too? Yes, osam.com. Mm -hmm. That's H, I mean, O H P S A L M S dot com. Which is your lifestyle. What? <laughs> marketing management. Okay, so let's company. see here. That's your marketing manager? Osam is his company. When you want to relax and have a destination trip or plan a birthday party, we need to do commercial for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the first um, question that we have from the one of your fans. Her name is Tiffany Odo from Ohio. I want to know how they feel about being a powerful woman in the workplace. Or how do you feel about being a powerful woman in the workplace? I'm sorry. <laughs> What's her name again? Tiffany Odo. Tiffany. Hi, Tiffany Odo from Ohio. So how do I feel about being a powerful woman in the workplace? I feel amazing that I can put on a skirt and wear the pants at the same time. It's very difficult because I'm very much so homemaker, so I like to cook and do all the domestic stuff. But it's a blessing, and I think it's only fitting when you work hard and you reap the benefits. But my company is only a baby right now, and they say once you're three years or four years um, into the business and you're still floating, then you're definitely successful. So exactly. please continue to support. Go to CamilleMcDonald.com. The company is called Signature Walk Inc. If you want to be involved, but mm -hmm. thanks for your, um, your question. Appreciate it. Yes, and then also she has another question. Mm -hmm. And it is, what are some of the obstacles you have faced in being a powerful woman in the fashion industry? Wow, some of the obstacles that I faced being a powerful woman in the fashion industry is just being able to get over rejection. Fashion and being a model is all about rejection, all about no, all about make your hair shorter, make your hair longer, you're too light, you're too dark, your nose is too big, your nose is too small lose 10 pounds, lose five pounds, gain five pounds, gain 10 pounds. So, you know, you're not right for this part or rejection, it's, it's normal. And that's why I always say, stay strong, stay positive and com confident because what is for you is for you. And when those doors open, they open. And if they don't, you know what you do? You just kick them down. Mm. So that <laughs> would be a, the hardest part, um, I'd say for the majority of people. But for me, I found a way to not make it affect me in a negative way. Good, I like that. Now we have Ricky Avs from Bronx, from the Bronx, New York. How was your experience being on America's Next Top Model and now returning back for the All-Star Seat edition? Ricky Abs from the Bronx, my hometown. Hey, Ricky. From the boogie down Bronx. Is it, is it Abs because you have all this down here? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your question. Um, which was? Oh. <laughs> I was thinking about the app, so you know, I got a little distracted. How was your experience? <laughs> How was your experience being on America's Next Top Model and now returning back for the All Star Edition? Uh, my experience on America's Next Top Model Cycle Two was absolutely crazy. Honestly, it was one of the most stressful experiences of my whole entire life. Hence, the nature of competition and being crammed into a house with, you know, thirteen, fourteen, whatever other women and. It is what it is, and some people work best under stress and pressure. So going into the all-star cycle, I pretty much knew what I would be encountering, so to say. But then again, my cycle from cycle two to all-stars, I think it was like, I don't know, five, six years or something like that. So how much do you really remember when you're a working professional model traveling the world? Um, it was a crazy experience, and <laughs> you're just going to have to watch and, and, and find out because uh, we're all grown now, and some of us know each other and some of us don't 
and it's interesting to see if those characters are still the same or if they've, they've changed. Mm -hmm. So tune in September 14th <laughs> on the CW. Yes, network. Thank you for the question. <laughs> he also has actually another question. Oh, okay. It says, any hints on the new challenges that they needed to face in, well, any in the photo shoots? Hints on new challenges I cannot talk about right yes. now. But let's just say it is a celebrity studded edition. <laughs> no, definitely. And it's all stars, so expect the unexpected. Exactly. Now we have Jordan Essex from Orlando, Florida. Mm -hmm. From where I'm from. <laughs> How has your success affected your family and personal life since becoming an amazing model in the public's eye? Hmm. That's a good question. And the person's name was? Um, Jordan. Jordan. Hi, Jordan from Orlando. How has this success affected my family and my friends? Um, I'm just very blessed to have extremely grounded parents and friends. And they're, my parents and my family, they're in the entertainment industry, so to speak. So they're not super starstruck people or unfamiliar to the world. And everyone is human. Everyone believes. Everyone has to you know, go to the bathroom and you take it for what it is and everything um, <laughs> like a grain of salt. So they're happy for me and they're excited, but they're not super zealous. The most important thing for them is my security and being safe and having this experience work out to be something that's profitable in the long run that um, I can sustain myself as a young woman because I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a doctor, I'm a professional model. So. Um, with that being said, my friends, some of them are familiar with the industry and others aren't and I invite them all to my events so they can have a taste of what it is. Some understand what I do and some, some don't and, and that's fine. So when they are part of my world, it's, it's love and it's fun and it's, and it's happiness and they invite me to their world as well. Yeah, which I can actually <laughs> vouch to that. <laughs> but I think they all hate me because I'm never around. They're like, why don't you call me? Why don't you Facebook me? Why don't you text me? And I, that's like my status on Facebook is, or is Facebook so is true. like, you know, on a plane to somewhere. So, so I'm I, like, I don't care about you guys. I don't love you. So I'm, I'm working and trying to get this money, you know? Exactly. <laughs> I know I'm always trying to get in touch with her. If I don't get in touch with her, I'm like, where is she? And I have to go on Facebook and be like, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so Jordan has another question. Um, he said, how has your success gener generated from America's Next Top Model to form a career that includes your own clothing line? Hmm. And what are your next steps oh, in your career? I want to say when it comes to America's Next Top Model and a successful career, America's Next Top Model definitely helped when it came to branding yourself, hosting events, um, if you want to get back into television, so forth and so on. But as far as like my career in fashion, on the runway, I left the United States and I went to Milan where I got my agency and no one knew I was on America's Next Top Model. I really wanted to test the market for what it was to see if I had what it took to be a professional model. And I signed with major model management in Milan and nice. worked incredibly and uh, stayed there for quite some time and then came back to their sister agency in New York, Major Model Management in New York. And um, being on the show allowed me to raise a lot of money for causes that I am adamant about, like HIV AIDS awareness, hurricane relief, um, children's education, so forth and so on. So it's like a catch-22. Um, if I had stayed in the United States a little longer, maybe I would have um, signed some of those contracts with television deals that were offered to me post top model but my thing was the love for the runway and I really wanted to do that which is why I left the states and um, went overseas so your success really depends on what you do with it because once you're kicked off the show you don't have your manager your publicist your agent your accountant your lawyer like all these 10 different things if not more that go into making someone um, a celebrity and successful so I thank America's Next Top Model for giving me the platform to work with. But at the end of the day, it's about you. It's about your grind. It's about your hunger and your ambition. Because um, no one's going to do it for you but yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Very nice. 
Okay, now we have another question, and this one is by Roberto Negrin from Manhattan, New York. Mm -hmm. And he says, what advice will you give to the girls that follow you and want to have a successful career as you? Wow. <sighs> study, 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 study. Study your business, study your craft, study what it is that you want to do. Know everyone's name, know every place so that you can be the best that you can be and you don't fall into those pit holes that those models or people in the business have before you. That's really important. And never take no for an answer and stay strong and positive. Don't fall for the gimmicks. Don't ever sell yourself short. Don't ever feel that you have to do something that morally you're not comfortable with because it will come your way at some point in time. And just know that if this field of work is for you, it'll happen. And sometimes a race, you know, is not for the swift, but those who endure it, so. Very cool. <laughs> Now we also have another question, and this one is by Emmanuel Mansfield. Do you think you and Tyra Sanchez from RuPaul's Drag Race were depicted similarly on reality TV? <laughs> That's such a cute question. <laughs> Tyra Sanchez, I mean, like, she is fierce, you know, in her own right, and she was, you know, a little misunderstood, and I felt that I was a little misunderstood too. But you know, the girl had undeniable talent and just gorgeous and fierce and creative in her own right. And you know, Paul gave her a platform to shine and that's what she did. You know, sometimes you don't necessarily have to win a show to be a winner, hence Jennifer Hudson. So it's it's really what she put into it. So, you know, maybe now I'm gonna, you know, add Tyra to my to my Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I also have here another one, and this one is, again, by Ricky Abs. This one is actually a really good question. If you could choose any fashion brand to model for the rest of your career, what would it be and why? <laughs> if I could choose any fashion brand to model for the rest of my career, that's kind of hard because I expect my career to be pretty long, maybe, you know, until I decide to retire. Who knows when that is? 65? So I would say, you know, Versace. You know, I love <laughs> Versace, but then again, you know, at 65, I'm not sure if Versace would be appropriate. Um, but I love Versace. I love um, uh, Diane Lofferstenberg. Her classic wrap dresses are amazing. I love Roberto Cavalli, you know, YSL, I mean, you name it. It really just depends on, you know, how I'm feeling at the moment. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, I'm going to try to stay in stilettos as long as I can. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and he also has a really good question. How do you stay so fit and beautiful? Wow, thank you. Um, staying fit is definitely not, it's not an easy thing, but it's something that you have to incorporate in your life as your lifestyle. You can't think about getting up and going to the gym as exactly. a chore, like something that you <laughs> have to do because you want this result. It's something that you have to incorporate, like you incorporate using the bathroom or just drinking water to stay alive. So I'm in the gym at least five days a week. I know it sounds like a lot, but my body is my business. And I have two favorite classes right now, and it's called Kettlebells and TRX. So if you don't know what those two things are, you definitely have to look it up. I have an amazing trainer. Her name is Pat and also Sean at New York Sports Club. And I mean, the adrenaline rush that you get from working out is amazing. You actually have way more energy. And it's not just the exercise, it's also diet. When I say diet, not as in diet as in lose weight, but what you eat, what you put in your body. If you had a really expensive car, Ricky, like, I don't know, Ferrari or something like that. Are you going to the gas station and are you putting in, <laughs> you know, regular gas? Uh, I don't think so. You're going to put premium gasoline in your car. So consider your body as the one only that you have, a prized possession. And it's all this is luxury. So make sure you're eating foods that are giving you the maximum amount of nutrition. You know, wake up in the morning, have a protein shake, you know, make sure you're having enough vegetables and nuts and all that stuff. No one's saying you can't eat pizza and like hamburgers and potato chips. You can. And if you know that bag of potato chips is 175 calories when you're on the bike in the gym, make sure you see how long it takes you to burn off the 175 calories if you want to stay at your 
you're seeing weight, but you don't seem like you have a problem because you know you got abs, so you're probably <laughs> doing something right. So exercise, diet, and sleep. Awesome. Now that's a great way of looking at it, though. Really premium. Yes. So yeah. yes. Mm. <laughs> I need to think about that. <laughs> I need to get on a diet myself. <laughs> Now we have the last question. It is by Pearl Running Deer, mm -hmm. and it is, will you be at Fashion Week? Oh my God, yes, I will definitely be at Fashion Week. Um, castings are coming up shortly, so I'm praying. Um, you know, yes. we talked about those fears before that. I'll definitely <laughs> be casted, God willing, you know, for uh, some shows during New York Fashion Week, definitely. Um, New York Fashion Week is extremely special and close to my heart. Unfortunately, it's not in Bryant Park anymore. Um, I think it's going to be its second year out. And wherever there is a runway, whether I'm sitting in the audience and watching, whether I'm on the floor making the magic happen and selling the garment, you know, it's, it, it's all just, I just think of it like confetti and glitter and <laughs> just, uh, I love it. I love it, definitely. So. Yes, so we'll see. That's really Come good. cover it. Come cover Fashion Week. Yes, let's <laughs> do it. <laughs> well, thank you guys for asking the questions because you guys had some really good questions. I was like surprised, you know? I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know more about everything that I know. But um, so I wanted to ask you, now this is my question. Yes. What are you wearing? Because this outfit <laughs> is looking hotness right now. And I love the color. Well, I'm wearing a dress by a new Italian designer just introduced to the American market in the past, nice. I believe, uh, year and a half. And uh, it's called La Petite Robe Chiaraboni. And La Petite Robe means, you know, the small, the little dress. And this is a fabric never seen before here in the States. It's called Sensitive. Nice. The fabric is called Sensitive, and it comes in a lightweight, a heavyweight, and a medium oh, wow. weight. It's almost like a jersey material. Very and cool. the fabulous thing about um, <laughs> La Petite Robe is that you don't have to iron it. All you do is step into all of their garments, you fold it in a very cute bag that comes with each dress, wow. and you pull out your suitcase or wherever you're going, and you wear something like this, I believe retails for maybe about seven hundred and eighty dollars like you can pick it up at neiman marcus one of my favorite stores nice. um nordstrom's or amy's of rye and um you should definitely be seeing la petite robe shadowboni um in stores la petite this fall robe. i mean it's i love it and for women who are concerned about like their body shape you don't need Spanx or any of those body shapers when you wear something like this because it holds you in and it feels amazing and it's not it even, does. It's, it's not very even, like... It's not even sewn on, yeah, the, very on the sleeves. It's all laser cut. Talk about an innovation in technology and something for every woman of all ages that nice. takes minimal care. You just wear it, you throw it in the washing machine, and you're gone. And like, that's it. who wants to wake <laughs> up in the morning and have to worry about something being crushed or, or ironing it? So I really love the company, and I'm fortunate enough to be their, their fit model, so. Very cool. Now <laughs> tell us about your shoes, because everybody can see your shoes. Right here. <laughs> oh, these old things! <laughs> <laughs> these are just a pair, you know, of Christians, Christian Louboutins. And nice. um, I love these shoes because they have an incredibly tall heel, and they're famous for the red bottoms, of course. But did you know, Pedro, that um, Christian Louboutin just lost in court with uh, YSL because YSL wanted to uh, come out with shoes and have the bottom be red as well. Wow. And Christian was trying to hold on to it because that's their signature, you know, exactly. look of their shoe. And uh, they lost. So YSL, I believe, is going to come out with the red bottoms also. And it's kind of like, what? You know, but um, amazing I did not know that at all, actually. <laughs> amazing craftsmanship. And the bottoms are painted red um, in the beginning just to, you know, draw some amazing attention. And I love them. They're Let comfortable, and these are like, I don't know, um, <laughs> five, what is this, like five inch? <laughs> five and a half mm. inch heels? Well, my little fingers. Oh my God, <laughs> I, I got, uh, what is this? Um, <laughs> all of here on my shoe. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, shoes are a girl's best friend. I think I have maybe about, how many pair? Hmm. I'm sure you have like freaking, 20 million? I'm just kidding. No, okay. not that I think many. I have like, uh, maybe like 
250 pairs of stilettos right now. But you know, it's okay. I justify it by saying I'm not a smoker, <laughs> not a you know big drinker. I have my you know little fetishes, but the money that people would spend on cigarettes or something like that that's going to harm them or it's not good for them, you know, I, I spend on shoes. <laughs> Well, isn't that what you all you girls do anyways? Thank you. So, <laughs> like, yeah. we spend money on, well, we spend money on shoes too, <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah, so I, 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 I like this. I like these shoes. They're. Yeah, one of my cool. favorite outfits that you had was the pink dress for your birthday. That's ah. one of my favorite. <laughs> I was like, and then you rolled up with the pink limo. I was like, oh my god! Yeah, I'm a big Hello Kitty <laughs> fanatic. She's a big man. Hello Kitty fan. Like, if you ever want to buy her anything, go to the Hello Kitty store and get her everything that you. <laughs> the think jewelry of. collection, <laughs> the Morley Simmons jewelry yeah. collection of Hello Kitty. Um, you know, that was my thirty second. Like my birthday? 32nd birthday party i just wanted to be such a girl you know the pink and like the crystals and um all that stuff happening and the cake was amazing all my friends came out so i really appreciate it um yeah, speaking about age <laughs> you know yeah. uh, i've been reading a lot of my uh america's next top model all-star tweets and you know facebook entries and just things that are on the blogs everyone is just like so down on like you know my age my age my age and you know i just wanted to say that i'm here like i was considered for all star and i made it and sometimes it's not about your biological age and your genealogical age meaning if you did a test or study how young your body actually is. Like you could put me up to a 25 year old who drinks and smokes or doesn't go to the gym and is not taking care of themselves. In actuality, you know, I'm younger because I'm healthier. I spent a lot of time in the gym, you know, and eating healthy. So can I get some credit out there? <laughs> somebody called me, hey, somebody called me um, a grandma. No, I don't think so. I mean, you have women like Naomi Campbell, who's like 46, and she is still working. Open any magazine, she's on the cover, she's on, you know, the back, she's doing her spread for amazing companies like YSL like the generation now models are definitely getting older and they're getting better with time I would trade nothing to go back to being 20 something <laughs> like when you reach the age of you know you're in your 30s you definitely have way more knowledge than you did when you were younger and yeah. it's just amazing to be in the space that I am in now and all those girls who are younger they're definitely gonna have to be where I am now so take notes <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know. I mean, that's that's like a really tough, like, environment. Really, it is. I mean, compared to you know photography, like, yeah, we have competition, but it's not the same competition no, that not. you know you would get as a model. I mean, like, I'm 33 right now, and everyone's like, oh, hair blowing back like you're 33. Yeah, and I have current, you know, campaigns going on and I'm working, I have my agency. Right now, other models <coughs> of color who are 33 are Alekwek, you have um, Lila Kabeke, um, Yasmin, you have um, Naomi, Lenore, I mean, the list basically goes on, you know, and I look forward to being just as pro profitable in terms of success and finances as, you know, a Veronica Webb, you know, on, uh, Tyra Banks, who's 38, and um, Platt Cleveland, she's 59 years old, and she is, like, killing it. So, you know, I definitely give props to women like Celine Banks and Jessica White, who are in their late 20s, but they're still grinding and they're still working. And we are women of color, so at times we can appear younger than we really are. So I'm just blessed to still be in the game and still be grinding. I've been doing this since I was 15 right. years old. <laughs> you know, so there's way more things to come in my future, so. Well, congratulations to everything you've done. Thank you. I am very proud of you, and so are all the fans out there. You're an amazing woman, and just keep doing you, and don't worry about nobody else. And. Thank you. Don't worry about it, girl, because you're going to be successful <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> Keep that smile going. And I want to ask you one more question. Mm -hmm. So what do you have coming up for us in the future other than America's Next Top Model? 
Um, I have a lot coming up. Like I said, I look up to these icons of models that I just named for you from, you know, Beverly Peel, Beverly Johnson, um, all the pioneers who came before me, Aman, and they've all transitioned their careers from modeling, some still are modeling, to having their own lines of product. And even Cindy Crawford, I mean, it's amazing. So God willing, hopefully, I'm thinking of coming out with the shoe line. Signature walk, why not? Stilettos. Uh -oh. <laughs> so you can do your own signature walk. And also a cookbook. Like the questions we received today from all of you wonderful Facebook and Twitter fans. I just want to share with the world my diet plan, what it is that I eat, because like I said, my family's from the Caribbean. So I have a lot of exotic stuff that you would think yeah. there's no way that, you know, I'm <laughs> eating it and I'm staying so slim and so skinny, but it's amazing. So I'm I I hope that my venture in a those two things will definitely take off so I can share with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to this cookbook. Yeah, cookbook hey. and also has some um, lifestyle uh, things that you can do to stay in shape as well, like small, you know, hints about exercise, so forth and so on. And it's really simple and, That's you know, awesome. it's nothing better than like eating healthy and working out and having an amazing pair of stilettos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe I can give you a couple of tips on how to cook some Spanish. You That's know, right. Come on. Bring it on. <laughs> some gandules or something. Okay. Okay. Some platanos. All some right. Some platanos. There you go. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for coming on my show. And I want you to tell everybody how they can find you on Facebook and Twitter and everything. Give them all your information because I'm pretty sure everybody wants to get in touch. Definitely. Well, this is Camille McDonald, and you've been watching the PVAS show. And if you want to get in contact with me, simply go to my Twitter, which is at Camille McDonald, or my Facebook, which is Camille McDonald as well. But make sure you hit me up on my fan page on Facebook, or you can check out and follow my current career at www.camillemcdonald.com. And I will see you for America's Next Top Model All Star, September 14th, 2011. See you then. There you go. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time. <laughs> That's <was> awesome. <laughs>